All right, what's going on guys? So we are in my shop this time with Crossfire Jason. We're gonna be working on my sled. So if you guys have seen any of my videos at all in the past, you've probably seen one where I blew a belt and that's not because I only put three videos out a year, it's because I blow like five or six belts a year and I put a video out every weekend. So today we are gonna to try to address that. Um, this kind of low powered sled shouldn't have this issue, but the, the bigger higher power sleds from this year, the 2012, 2013s, um, all kind of switched over to the big, blah, 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 blah. all kind of switched over to the big fin secondary. I still got the small fin secondary on there, so we're gonna pull that off. We're gonna have to switch out the helix with the used one that I bought, and uh, we'll put it back on, and if we ever get some snow, we'll test it out and see if I keep blowing belts or not. So let's get right into it. Actually, the one easy thing to do. I don't know what to do now. But. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun doing this in the dark. And cold and yeah. side of the trail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there's actually something that you can buy that makes something one piece. I don't remember what, I was reading, reading up on it. There was something that made this a little bit easier to deal with, but hopefully this will be the the end of my belt problems, I don't want to really worry about it. I was going to use the tool as it's for. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of pressed in there. Oh, I can just grab a flat washer if you want. Yeah, I think. I think this is. I don't know if I've ever taken one of these off, actually. I think usually they're just <laughs> all blown apart. <laughs> So here we've got a side by side. So basically the, the big fin is gonna just allow for more cooling. I don't know if there's really anything other than just the the fins that make the difference. Uh, I think the guy at Country Cat said there was something else, but I don't recall exactly what it would have been. But yeah, they look pretty similar other than the, the larger fins. But we do have to take those helixes out because they are different. The thing you wanna do is mark it so you put you know, in the same way. They are balanced at a set, you know? Sure, okay. So I mean, we are changing the helix out, so it's not gonna be perfect, but I think it'd be worth at least keeping the shivs in the same orientation. All right, so we are about to take the helix out of the new big fin clutch. We uh, we practiced on the, the old one, just so we don't look like fools. Uh, that went fairly smooth. It looks really smooth, it's all blurry. There we go. Uh, so that all came apart fairly easy. Uh, we did have to put a little bit of heat on it. I don't know if it just had way too much Loctite on one of those bolts or what, but Jason's got his fancy custom built tool there for compressing this. It is. Did you come up with that all by yourself? Uh, I made it all by myself. I don't know if I came up with it by myself. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I think, three ace all rod, a couple of nuts. I had a big hunk of metal from somewhere. Wash your nuts, take that guy through. And on the back side, I found some sweet washers. Put on there. And then the other nut. And then the reason I'm using the washers not big plate on this side is because we're gonna need to take out these four Torx bolts here. And this way you can get two in there. You gotta kind of sort of center it. And then tighten it until you have a good gap between the shivs. Once you have a gap between the shivs, there, there's no more spring tension on these bolts. So you'll see the shivs start to separate as we tighten this. So at this point, our rod is compressing the spring and pushing the helix and this shiv in and so now the rod is holding all the load of the spring and this shiv is just sitting here held on by the four bolts. So at this point we'll take off the four bolts. There's always one. <laughs> of course. So 
Which one do I have to yep. that one? The tight one. <laughs> Not so bad. So you can see how much Loctite's in there. <laughs> Yeah, this is one's got red Loctite on it. The other one was like white. So what I do is I don't take this nut off until you can feel there's no spring tension here. Because if you take this spring, this nut off, there's still a lot of tension in this and it's gonna go flying on you. So we're just gonna loosen the top that far. Cue the dueling banjos. Once we, you know, it's pretty obvious now there's no more spring tension, so let's we'll take this off. And then I'll set it upright so we know what's coming out and in what order. Remove our sweet tool. Alright, so the first thing you're going to get is your helix. And then on these are stamped, usually, looks like we have a date. And here's the Articat part number and the ramp angle. So it's a 44, 40 degrees, so it's got a changes the, the angle as you go up the ramp. We got a spring which I think this blue paint indicates the spring rate which is the same as what you had so it's I think actually the same spring. And there's this piece of plastic. Which seems quite a bit tighter I think yeah, than the other one right? It's actually got grooves on it. I don't think your other one did. Hmm. It's almost tight by design it seems. Wasn't there a washer in your other one? That guy. If you want it flat side up to hold the bottom of the spring. Yeah, it's got kind of an angle on it. Yep. Yeah, and the inside is kind oh, yeah, of you can see that kind of rounded in the radius there. Yeah. Yep. So you want to check your rollers for play, cracks. So that's going to be what came on my sled. That's the original, and like he was mentioning before, these are specific to what the sled, the motor. Uh, I guess the, I don't know how the that power and I mean it depends on your power. Um, on like the load that you're putting through the drivetrain. Yeah, I don't actually remember. I think this came off of a 9000, which would be the same motor that I have just turboed. So yeah, I guess that would make sense that it's a power difference thing. So this is the one off of my sled. We're keeping that just because of the, the measurements and the angles and stuff. Um, that'll be specific to my sled, but the rest of it is more or less universal. So to check this for wear, what you want to do is there's a bushing in the helix that rides on this shaft, and then there's a bushing in this shiv that rides on this shaft. And the, the allowable slop in there is half a millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is put this on here and then zero it, and then try to measure this and hope it's not more than half a millimeter, which we're at like one, almost 0.2. Probably not the, the most scientific accurate way to measure stuff but the, we're not measuring a crankshaft here right yeah i'd say a tape measure <laughs> <laughs> yeah pizza pizza tape measure so i'd say that one looks good so this one's even tighter looks pretty good got these little plastic pieces that were actually loose on the uh the donor clutch that i got and they are quite a bit different uh, so this was the one that came on my sled, and I think we said the backs lined up about right. So, that angle is different, and best we can tell, this is basically just gonna change your deceleration and where the where the clutch is at when you're decelerating, because uh, the other side just kind of slides down on that. So I think what we kind of decided the best thing to do is, is to keep these uh, from my sled, so they go back on my sled. So I'm gonna be taking these 
both off of here and putting them on my new big fin. It's because this is a wood screw, I'm spinning it back until it falls into place like that. But otherwise you can cut new threads. We left them loose now until we got everything lined up. <clears throat> got this loose now. So obviously we got this loose now. So we're gonna help us line it up later. Um, so what we're gonna do is get our other shiv. Make sure you got your white little slider in there. And then there's one of these in here because that's where the spring sits so that the spring rides on this and not your aluminum. Um, if you look at them, they're kind of flat on one side and round on the other end. So you're gonna want the flats to be on the, the spring side. So we got that one in there. And then we'll go ahead and set this in here. So we've got our mark there and our mark there. So we'll put that together the same way. Like so. And then we got that in there already so we can set the spring in. And then we'll grab our helix. Make sure this is in there the right way. And then we don't have our mark anymore, but it only goes in one of two ways. So what you want to look for is there's the two sides that have the groove. And then that's going to line up with the groove of those plastic slides there. So that groove side is going to pop in there and there. Again, make sure you keep your plastic guy, line up your grooves, and set her on there. So it's going to go something like that. If you leave that there, we can maybe use the impact for that part of it. Looks like we're about to line up. So we're on the right, so the roller's on the ramp here. You can tell, because this was just an angle, not a true ramp. You can see here's the ramp. And then here's our groove. And then that's gonna fall into place down there. Kind of sort of a tight window you gotta try to get into there. For the sake of time, we'll gently start to pull it in with this guy. See when I watch what you're doing, because see how we're almost gonna hit here, so kinda try to get this to line up. I'm barely giving it anything. So you can see I cleared this now. So we're in that. Keep giving her a little more. And this is why we left those plastic things loose because you gotta get them to go in that groove there. That one just went in. See that? How it's in as far as it would go. But this side's still on top. There, now it's in. But now the other side came out. So I'm sure it's gonna fight us a little bit. It sounds worse than it is. <laughs> Because if you don't get that plastic guy there lined up, then you won't get... Yeah, I'd love to get your holes little, lined yeah. up in there. So now I'm actually on the ramp. It's getting, might actually be able to start them right now. Pretty close, right? Yeah, you need to rotate it here, but yeah, I would think so. I think I'm actually tightening it to the point where I see I actually have the separation here. Yeah. Because I started hitting the ramp. Sure. Yeah, so it's already kind of starting to pull apart. So yeah, I think we should be able to which get means those lined that, up. Which means that's as close as it's going to get. I think you'll get that. Okay. So hopefully blue is enough. It actually went together pretty nice, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that well. spring really stretches out pretty far, don't it? Imagine doing that by hand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you'd get that done without this tool. The super... Expensive too. <laughs> I can't see anything anyways. Oh, maybe you can. Oh, 
I can lose here, oh, he's there. Oh no. <laughs> and that's the end of the video. <laughs> I must have got crooked on it. No, it's if it's on a, I think it's just torqued. Yeah, I don't know. It, it probably didn't like the impact. Oh, I suppose not. Yeah, it's cheaper to create ones. Shit, so what do we get? Those two? Well, yeah. mm. well, one and a half, yeah. You, how's it? Oh, I know, you probably screwed on. Yeah. That's pretty small. Alright, so, uh, so we don't have to run to the store or anything here. I cannibalized a kind of multi-tool one. Uh, Good old Harbor Freight, and then just stuck a quarter inch wrench on that, and hoping that that's gonna be enough. It's gonna be fun to try to keep it straight. Mm, that one feels like it's tight already, hopefully. <laughs> well, you might have gotten it tight already. Yeah, yeah, I did try a couple with this in the multi tool. A little bit. I think this should be the only one left. Unless we lost come. And I gave it one chuckle ugly with the impact rating. That's true, yeah. So then, what do I do? So you can just hit that one then, I guess? Ah! Well, at least we know we didn't over-tighten it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you should be good to make sure these are as tight as you want them. I mean, I wanna, you're just going into plastic, so I want to get crazy with it anyway. Right. But just go until it strips and back it off a little. <laughs> do it right yeah I think so so I've got this cleaned out I've got some lube put on the splines there by lube I mean grease I think we're ready to go back on big fin coming in <laughs> got the alignment tool here we're gonna try to show you the offset so what you want to do is put this part of it so it's flat on your secondary. And then looking down where it hits the inner shaft there, you wanna clear this bit. You don't wanna hit it coming down. So we're not hitting it. So we know our secondary is not in too far. And then the tolerance is 60 thousandths. So what we did is we stacked up 60 thousandths worth of feeler gauges here. And then we're going to try to set it in a spot where the tool would hit. I can't see what I'm doing, but I think I'm doing it right. Like that. And now, you can see I'm hitting the tool. So that's how you know you don't have more than 60,000 there. So this is in spec. Should we talk about how you, how you would adjust it? So if you had to adjust it, there's a shim behind the secondary right there. So obviously if you need to pull the secondary out, add more, if you need to move it in, remove them. And then you can get different thicknesses and stack them and whatnot. But we're good to go. You can do this with changing belts and then obviously putting belts on in this case, you flip this guy around and then you can thread it in there. But that'll open the secondary up. that you're good to go if I good to go I mean ready to check belt deflection so in case our belt deflection is good we don't take this back apart I'll show you how this goes so there are some shims on this that are held in place by this o-ring and then by adding or removing these you change the deflection so when you tighten this what you're really doing is pushing this helix down until it bottoms out, you know, until the shims hit this inner shaft. So where these shims are, hit this inner lip, and then this outer part hits the helix here. 
And so by changing the distance from the shim to this plastic, you're changing how much the helix gets pushed in. So if this is really thin, your helix is gonna get pushed in more, which will be a looser belt. And if this distance is greater, the helix won't have, you know, won't be preset in at all, which will be a tighter belt. That's as far as it wants to go because it hasn't back shifted. Oh, because you have a belt stuck in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Which kind of shows what we're talking about, though, if you were to add that, you know, change the shims by that amount, that's where you would be. Right. So in order to check deflection, I've got my alignment tool set on the top of the belt there, and then it is set on the top of the belt on the inside of the primary. I'm gonna stick a straight edge or ruler down these little vents here, and while holding that all in place and pushing down on the belt, And it looks like it's real dark. Looks like an inch and a quarter about. So I guess we're uh, ready to go to the UP then, right? <laughs> as soon as they get some snow. Yeah, we'll place it right there. What do you got going on over here? Uh, I found a pretty similar clutch design as yours. I found that roller is cracked. So my sled doesn't have reverse, so these rollers never get used. So I'm just gonna flip flop these rollers around so that I'm good to go. Hopefully this isn't gonna eat belts anymore and, and then we will be ready for the season. So Jason, thanks for coming over and changing that for me. I didn't really do anything but hold the camera, but I guess <laughs> that's my job now. So, <laughs> so appreciate the help. Uh, hopefully we can get these going and get on the trail and then get back to the truck at the end of the night. And happy birthday to Sea Dog. That's right, yeah. Well, it'll be like two months late now, but yeah. not, well, not that long. Sea Dog's birthday, right, so yeah. happy birthday, Sea Dog. <laughs> and he'll be out on the trails with us this year, too? Absolutely. All right, so uh, hit the subscribe button to see more. If you want to see some, some sled riding videos up in the UP and then in, uh, in central Wisconsin and maybe northern Wisconsin. Otherwise, uh, check out some more videos right now if you want, and uh, take care, stay safe, stay swanky. Bye-bye.